Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. And today in my this particular video, I am going to discuss one very interesting feature of Snowflake and that is called external functions. Okay, that is this particular feature basically allow us to use the functions which are basically outside of the Snowflake environment. Maybe that is sitting in Azure platform. Maybe that is sitting in AWS platform, right? Like those kind of functions, how to build and use in Snowflake queries to fulfill the business requirement. That's what I am going to discuss from scratch, okay? So many times we might require this, for example, sending mails, okay? Directly from Snowflake, you cannot send mail. But AWS, if you are using, then ACS or simple email services there. So all you can do, that is Snowflake email addresses, You, if you can send to that particular AWS function, then ACS can handle that, right? Similarly, machine learning or any artificial intelligence related algorithms, if you want to apply, then you can easily do that in Python. All you can do, just connect Python and Snowflake, call that function, inside the SQL query of the Snowflake in the back end it will be calling the Python code and execute that machine learning model and based on that whatever outcome it will be getting it will return that in Snowflake so like those kind of things can be easily done using this external function okay so the picture basically is very simple we are going to use Snowflake AWS API gateway on which I have discussed in detail in my previous videos and AWS Lambda as execution platform for Python, okay? If you want to use some other programming language, obviously you can use that as well, okay? Right? So before going ahead, some prerequisite, you should have a clear idea that is, first of all, configuring a Snowflake storage integration access with Amazon service, okay? That is this particular one which I also discussed. This particular picture basically demonstrate how an integration object is used to connect in between AWS platform and Snowflake, okay? So this I have already created while creating external stage connectivity, right? I'll be providing the link in the description box, you can go through that, okay? The next topic which you should have a clear idea that is creating a post API in AWS API gateway, okay? Right? So regarding this also, how to create HTTP API, I have already discussed in detail. I'll be providing this link also in the description box. Basically, user will hit a post API that will go to AWS API gateway and that will forward the request to Lambda. Lambda will process that and will send that response to API gateway and from API gateway, the, the response will send to user. Right? So this kind of pipeline also I have covered. So this also we are going to use in our this particular external function. So the architecture of external function is, so we are going to define one external function in Snowflake. This syntax I'll be providing to you. No need to worry about a single line of code. Whatever code I'll be demonstrating in this particular video, all those will be given in the description box so that you can copy and paste in your particular environment, modify the required parts and go ahead with the rest of the part as it is. Okay. That Snowflake external function will basically call Amazon API gateway. And basically, we'll be having Lambda function, which is our execution platform. We are going to use Python, right? Okay. And all these things will be having controlled access using AWS IAM. Okay. That is, we'll be basically sending the data, whatever needed to be processed or, or request, we can say, from Snowflake to Amazon API Gateway. That data basically we send in this particular place in terms of JSON format. I'll be showing you the JSON format also, right? And then here from AWS API Gateway, it will hit Lambda. Lambda will process the request, send back the response to AWS API Gateway. And from there, it will go back to Snowflake external function as JSON data only, right? Okay. Now, and also, obviously, all the logs will be also stored in Amazon CloudWatch as well, right? This is a simple architecture. I hope you can easily understand. I'll be discussing all this piece in details within few minutes. Okay. So what should be our step one? That is creating Lambda function. So suppose in our Snowflake, we are having a table select star from DemoDB public employee. Okay. Which is containing some data, dummy data I can say for different employees, their departments and their salary. Okay. Right. And I have created basically one particular external function in Snowflake, which basically uses this particular column, okay, name column, right? 
so that function i can call like this way select my function any name you can give okay then we need to pass that particular column how we do in sql right that is function name and then inside parenthesis we pass the column on which we have to apply that function same way select my function name from demo db public employee okay so what it will do in the back end when it will hit the api gateway it will be sending the data as json i told you right so the json will look like something like this sort if you see that is in lambda function you know right that there is always something called event is there in our main lambda function inside that event there will be basically a key called data and data will be basically list of list or array of array okay see here this is our parent array and all the elements inside the parent array are also array only or list only we can say right first element is basically index position okay that is 0 is indicating first element that is first row 1 is indicating second element or second row 2 is indicating third element or basically uh, third row like that it is going okay so see this index we are not passing in our main function this particular uh, snowflake and aws architecture is automatically handling those things okay so you should remember this that the first uh, element of our this particular value of the data key will be basically index okay which is denoting the row number okay or element number that is first element second element or first row second row like that you see that is zero that is first row there is James, so James is coming. In the second row, that is indicating by one because in Python array index or list index starts from zero, right? So basically one means second element. So you see this particular value is coming here like that, right? Very simple. Okay, I hope up to this you are all good. So the thing only you need to remember that is in Lambda function, in event, a key will be there which is called data and data will be list of list inside which the each element will be basically array or list first element of that internal array will be index which will denote the row number second element will be our data okay now suppose you want to process the data very simple all we need to do for row in event of data okay so event of data when we are doing that means basically we have extracted this complete array okay right parent array and then in parent array we are traversing or iterating okay that's why for row in event of data so row is basically containing each time individual uh, child array or child list right and then our actual data equal to row of one because you see that each time row will be taking this internal array or internal list right so if you see that is in this particular one the second element is our actual data which is present in snowflake that's why we are extracting using row of one one means second element right and then we basically want to send a simple message that is hello and that data that is hello james hello robert like that way we want to send the response okay and how to send the response that is also kind of json only so that is almost same like our input format like this way okay that is in our input format looks like this right i just now i have told you that is from snowflake when you'll be calling the external function it will be sending the data in back end like this way that is there will be a data key which will be list of list and in the child list basically first element will be index position right and the second element will be the our actual data which is present in snowflake this is for our input format similarly for output you need to send like kind of same way only see how i did that is basically if you see this return that is one thing you need to add extra that is status code 200 that is that will indicate that it is processed successfully the api call is successful right so right and then there is one more key which we are passing as data right which will be basically process data or response from this external function we can send from uh, lambda to snowflake right so that data see key is same in the return of the json and the input json both key is data only and the format of the return is also same see translated so what i did in translated so here i have first created parent list or parent array right so now inside this we have to stuff some arrays or some list right so for row in event of data we are traversing in this input 
data equal to row of one, which will basically extract the names James, Robert, etc., etc. We are creating the message and then translated dot append. So we are basically appending values in this particular parent list. Okay, what we are appending? We are appending one list only, row of zero. Row of zero is basically what? Row of zero is basically this index position zero, one, two, three, which will basically indicate the row number. Okay. And then message. Message is basically kind of response which actually we are processing. Okay. That is if you see the translated, this particular response will be same like this kind of input only. Right. Only instead of James, it will be hello James. Only instead of Robert, it will be hello Robert like that. Okay. But make sure the first element of this internal list or the child list must be always index position. That is 0, 1, 2. Same like our input format. Okay. And then finally, we are returning the data as translated. That's it. This is all about your external function input output format. Okay. Input, you no need to think about much. Just you need to understand how to get the data from the event. Right. And then you can proceed with the uh, processing, whatever you want to do with that data. Maybe some machine learning, maybe some sending mails, maybe some hello world. Simple example like how I am going to discuss. And then you need to take care of how the structure of the JSON what you are sending back as response also okay right all right now without any further delay let's go to our aws management console so first step what we will do here i have noted down the steps broader steps are like this first we'll create the lambda function then we'll create a rest api to invoke and then we'll use snowflake im role to connect in between aws and snowflake and then we'll use that role for creating our external function and we will call that okay right so here i will go to lambda okay and then here i will go to create function snowflake demo external function okay right and then here i will be using python 3.8 okay right and then here, here i will go to create function okay so let me save this particular one, the lambda function, what we created. Okay. Right. And this is our lambda code. Okay. All we are doing, we are basically taking the name of that particular employee column and we are sending hello, that particular employee name. That is hello James, hello Robert, like that. Okay. So all I will do, I will delete this particular code and paste it here. Okay. And then here I will deploy. Right. Now. I need to create API gateway. Okay. So here I will go to AWS API gateway. And then here I will create a REST API. I will go to build multiple times. I have discussed all these things. So I am going this little quick. New API, demo, testing, snowflake, external function. Okay. I am keeping endpoint type as regional. And then I am creating the API. Okay. Right. Now the next step will be we need to create the resource. Resource is hello world problem. Okay. So that is after the endpoint we need to give slash hello world. Okay. We can create this resource. Right. And then here we can create the method un under this particular resource. That is post method we need to create. We will check this particular one. And here we need to call the lambda. That is basically this particular lambda, which function name I have already copied. Let me use that so that API gate will trigger that, right? And then here I can save this. As soon as I click on save, it will say that we are going to add this permission to lambda function. We are okay with that so that invoke will happen properly. And this is our flow is already created, right? And then all we need to do, we need to deploy this API deployment stage. I am going to create a new stage, maybe in development environment I want to deploy. So here now I can deploy this. Okay. So this is our info URL. I will copy this particular stuff. And here I will paste that one. Not only that, this is just endpoint. We need to put the resource path also, right? What is our resource path we created? That is if I go to resources, that is hello world, right? So I will be copying this particular part. And here I will be testing that okay so our api endpoint is created now we need to create this snowflake iam role right and all we need to do i will go to aws management console 
here I will go to IAM and then in IAM here I will create role for snowflake connectivity okay all we need to do create role right and then another AWS account already I discussed how to do this now here I need to give account ID all I will do I will go to my security credential I will open in a new tab and here my AWS account ID is present I'll be copying from there I will paste it here and for more security we need to give external ID also for the time being I am giving some zero values and then I am going to next permission and here I am giving AWS lambda okay I am giving lambda full access and API gateway also okay so that we will be not having any issues with the, with the roles okay whatever we are using I am giving access okay so here I will give API AWS API gateway invoke full access I will be choosing that here I will go to next review okay Amazon lambda full access API gateway full access here I will give snowflake lambda connection like this some I am some name I am giving and here all I need to do create role right and here basically snowflake lambda connection role is created with these two privileges that is API gateway info access lambda full access right now here if I go back to my lambda okay this is now should be triggered by API gateway maybe let me refresh this particular page and then here see it is now connected with the API gateway so as soon as we will call the post method the, it will trigger the lambda it will process and send back the response now we need to go back to our snowflake okay so I am basically dropping a database ram if it is existing okay then I am creating that database as a face environment right okay okay so currently it is sysadmin let me convert change this role to account admin okay because to compute all these things account admin is a powerful role right switch role to account admin please and reload this page no issue okay so here I can do drop database if exists Ramu this executed and now create database if not exist Ramu right and here Ramu created if I refresh this particular one see Ramu database is there here right just now it is created now I am going to use this particular database Ramu okay now here I need to create some API integration okay so let me remove all these stuffs okay I'll be showing you how to do that coding so here create or replace API integration hello testing so this is our integration object name if you want you can change this particular name no issue API provider is AWS API gateway right API gateway only we are going to use now role ARN so we need to go back to it I am and here we need to copy this particular role which we just now created with these two privileges and here all we need to do we need to paste that right so this is our role ARN and which API it should hit that is this particular API which link we have already copied right I'll be copying this and here I'll be pasting that right all we need to do just run this particular one alone okay it is successfully created now if I just describe this integration object I'll be getting all the details about user and then external ID which has to be matched and all okay these things we need to update back in our IAM role right I have already discussed so user ARN I will be copying this particular value I'll be going to IAM role and here I need to click on trust relationship and edit trust relationship here this IAM user instead of root we need to put this one and apart from that the external ID that is while creating that IAM role we put 00, zero instead of that this value we need to put right so these things also I have discussed in detail so I am not wasting much time so see these are updated right we are all set with this integration object now here we are basically creating our external function 
send notification not send notification necessarily hello world let me give hello world okay so create or replace external function hello world okay then here we need to pass whatever will be input for our external function that is we are basically passing name right which is having the type varchar right varchar data type we are passing obviously uh, because the names are in string and then we are returning variant okay fine keep it as it is all you can do suppose you are passing two or three input parameter for this particular function you can put that here with comma separated values that is the first the name uh, that is name of the variable or column whatever you say and then the data type okay then here we need to put the api integration equal to hello testing so we created hello testing right so that integration we are going to use okay right and then here you need to put the url api endpoint okay that is this is kind of common format just the input parameters you can change and after as here you can put the api endpoint which it is hitting okay that is this particular one right i'll be copying this particular one and pasting it here okay right and then here i can run this particular one okay so see it is successfully created function hello world created now here i can call this particular one that is select hello world of name column from our employee table which is this particular one maybe i can choose okay right and paste it here okay so here like normal sql function we are calling just we are passing name column which is basically part of our employee table now let's see what kind of output we are getting let's run this particular piece alone see hello james hello robert hello michael okay right and then hello maria like this all the names we are getting as it is maybe i can put here name column also okay name comma hello hello world name from our table which is see that is after name it is just adding hello like those kind of thing if you go back to your aws lambda all you can do you can go to monitor section and here you can go to view logs in cloudwatch okay right and then here you can see that whatever logs okay so if i click on logs here you will see if i click on data that is in this lambda function basically if you see the lambda function here i printed the event right so let's see how the event is coming in lambda see it is coming like this way data that's what i told you right that whatever snowflake column you will be passing in the lambda function it will be coming as a data key okay and then inside that list of list is the value and in, in each child list we are passing the first element is basically row number that is James is belonging to first row Michael is belonging to second row Robert is belonging to third row Maria is belonging to fourth row like that and the second element of the child list will be containing our actual snowflake data right so all if you can understand that the json format what is coming input and output that's it your job is over there actually okay here the code is almost common i will show you one more thing that is for example that is more than one input parameter if you are passing an external function the same way you can handle basically all you can do that is this particular architecture i have shown you right for single function that is suppose i want to pass now department also so in that function you can pass name comma department like this way and then suppose if you consider this particular table the request whatever will coming in aws lambda will look like this that is the key will be same data and in child list after the row number two elements will be there one will be the name one will be the department name department like that okay simple right and then here you can use for loop like how we used name will be second element of the child list department will be third element of the child list and maybe i am this time i am sending the message that is this particular employee who is having this particular name works in this particular department like that right the same way only so here the lambda function if you are using two uh, input parameters for your function can be like this so you can write that is translated is same return type is same just the internal part processing we are doing in a different way we are taking name and department we are creating the message we are sending that that's it okay i will show you this one as well 
maybe here if i go i have already written that code for you here demo 2 all i will do i will copy this particular code this code also i will be providing in the description box or in the comment section you can go through that i will go to lambda function i will delete this particular one and paste it i will deploy this particular one right our lambda is deployed and here we need to update the hello world external function so name is fair care then comma here we need to pass department d e p a r t m e n t fair care right department fair care and then all we have to replace this particular function it is replaced perfectly okay now here if i run this particular code let's see what output we are getting see it is it has given error right because it is expecting basically two kind of uh, input columns but here we are giving only one right so now we need to give department also right and here maybe i can pass this particular code now let's see what output we are getting okay see how beautifully named that is james maybe here i can put department also to show you in a better way right so here i need to run this particular code and i'll be getting this kind of thing see james who is working in sales department we are getting back the message james works in sales department michael in sales michael works in sales department Maria in finance. Maria works in finance department. That is basically try to understand or fill the pipeline. Snowflake external function using API integration. It is calling the backend API. And when you are requesting, the data is captured by API gateway. It is giving that to Lambda. Lambda is processing that, sending back the response in terms of JSON. That JSON is automatically formatted in Snowflake. All we need to make sure, whatever we are returning, the first element should be row number okay that is row of zero because row of zero is something what we are getting in the child uh, list right that is row number is already present in the child list so we are using that same in the json which we are returning right okay so this is pretty much it about this particular external function i hope you have understood the power maybe you can integrate lambda python easily with some machine learning models or some aws services to send mails and all and you can send from here easily just use this particular external function as normal SQL function that's it okay so if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of all latest videos thank you